Hi, Patrick. Nice to have you, mate. Thanks for joining us. I'm just going to put up the uh, link to my new channel. That's up there. So you'll be able to see the uh, new gardening channel. I decided to ship everything over to the uh, to that. I've kept um, the existing gardening um, videos on my um, on my main channel, but I've just put uh, to save shipping them all across there, to, uh, copying them all across. I've just put uh, a uh playlist up there which directs him to to my my cookery channel uh, am i getting out can you hear me all right patrick mm. perfect Okay, I'm prob we're probably getting a little bit of delay, although I've tried to uh, mitigate that to some extent using the software. But we'll have a little bit of one. Who else have we got? We've got one concurrent view. <laughs> Patrick, it's just you and me, mate. <laughs> um, can you... Um, can you do... Uh, what do they call it? What do they call it? Uh, when you regulate it, the, you'll have to do it on yourself, mate. <laughs> you hung over. <laughs> what you've been doing? Draining bottles of whiskey. Yeah. Only one concurrent viewer at the moment. This is a bit of a washout, isn't it, so far? <laughs> uh. Oh, are you? <laughs> Best way to avoid hangovers, isn't it? Stay drunk. Yeah. According to this um, interface, I've got an excellent connection. I've just been looking at um, a cookery um, quiz. I did it and I got 6 out of 10, so I can't be that good, can I? What have we got? We've got three concurrent viewers. Say hello if you've just joined us. Thanks for joining us, my friends. We'll get something going when I got a few more, uh, a few more viewers checking in. And it looks like there's something like a twenty-second delay on from me recording. Hi, Mark. Th thanks for joining us. Anybody else want to say hello in the chat? It's okay, we don't bite. Don't need to lurk. <laughs> Hi, John. John Doe, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. I'm having to look over here for the feedback because over there on my other screen is um is the interface otherwise you'll be looking at the side of my head all the time so uh mark and john where are you from i know patrick is from near melbourne in uh, australia so where are you from mark and where are you from john
from New York City. Well, welcome from the Big Apple. Thanks for joining us anyway. It's great to see you here. And you're more than welcome. Six concurrent viewers. Say hello if you're online. Mark's from Swansea Valley in Wales. He's at the other end of Wales. I'm in North Wales and he's in uh, the southern part. It's lovely down there. I love the uh, Gower Peninsula and it's really beautiful down that part of the world. It really is lovely. Oh, hi, Stephen and Jacqueline. Thanks for joining us all the way from Trinidad. Thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. Who else is in the house? Who else is uh, going to say hi? <laughs> Patrick's your brother from the future. That's, <laughs> I love it. It's got to be done. Yeah, super. Seven concurrent viewers. Come on, we're building up. We're doing all right now. If you're lurking and haven't said hello, just say hi. And then I can uh, give you a shout out and say hi back to you. I think... Uh, hi, Jen Jen. Thanks for joining us. Always nice to see you. Thank you. Oh, you're near the Black Mountains. Oh, it's really nice, that part. Used to do... Uh, when I was in the military, I used to go down to the Brecon Beacons. And um, on one occasion, we did some orienteering work up in the Black Mountains. That was a long, long time ago. Dagenham Dave is in the house. I, I Dave, yeah, I'm all, all good, thanks, mate. And I hope the same, I trust the same is true for you. Thanks for joining us. It's always good to see you. Well, uh, I haven't done a live in quite a quite a long time. I I, I did a series of uh, talks, um, but I kind of moved on from that, and uh, I think pretty much Mike picked up where where I left off, and he's he's been doing really really great with it, with the help of uh, Patrick and uh, Stephen and Jacqueline. Uh, what do they call it when you regulate? I can't remember it. When, you, anyway, they're always great help. Uh, I pasted my my new channel. I called it Prenabuid, which uh, it basically means the tree of life in uh, in Welsh. Mark, do you speak Welsh? I don't. <laughs> Um, that's uh, I'm pasting now I'm just pasting in the link to uh, my new channel so if you're interested in gardening please give it a look over there's only a couple of videos up at the moment but uh, there's also a playlist of my earlier gardening videos that I did on the Pete Thomas channel yeah, same, same, uh, same here. Peckinbach. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Who else is in the house? Let's say hi. I might do this. Um, I might do that food quiz actually. See if any of you you know it. We can do that. Have a go at that. Yeah, it's good. Uh, the uh, Prenabuid is the tree of life. And if you go to the about section, it'll tell you a little bit more about it. Why I chose that name. Interesting. I, I just... Um, it's the same symbol that Emma uses on her uh, on her new business uh, at the homestead in Nova Scotia. Yeah, um, 
I, I won't be transferring them all across it's just because that's too much of a pain but I've just put a playlist of them in in in, in the new channel so they'll they'll anybody who wants to catch up can just watch that playlist and then uh, all the future videos will be in on Prenabuid. I may at some time in the future move them all across but uh, I, I I think that would knock everything out of sync if you know what I mean because uh, I've started this channel intro with um, with the beds built and everything but uh, those who want to go back can still watch the, the playlist so uh, it, it's been a bit of a struggle you know we've, we've had quite a lot of um, wind for one and um, and the other problem, of course, is it, it's, it's it's not been. It, there's been no predictive, predictable pattern of weather coming up because it, it it gets cool some nights, and we had very late frost this year. So getting anything started was real, really difficult. So uh, I I really wanted to see peppers this year, but it I, I might. Um, I might struggle to see any any peppers in reality I've got um, a Rokoto pepper growing which is um, it's it's a hot pepper and it's from Peru in Latin America and it's a high mountain variety and it's got this um, it's quite fleshy it's got got quite they come in different colours. The one one I've got, I believe, is red and quite fleshy, almost like a sweet pepper in fleshiness. Uh, but it's got black seeds and it can't cross-pollinate with other types of um, of uh, pepper. So I'm, I'm really anxious to see those grow and see what comes out. I've got, um, I've got Scotch bonnet pepper. I've got uh, jalapenos. Uh, I've, I've got the race from seed in here a little too late i think uh, i've got some um habaneros i've got some yellow habaneros and some red habaneros yeah that that's what i'm worried about um Stephen and jacqueline yeah I'm, I'm i am worried about it running interference with my current channel Patrick, I'm tipping this new channel will be Vegemite free. <laughs> I might actually stun and shock you with a, with a Vegemite video at some point in the future. Because uh, and I know Patrick and I have a bit of fun over that, but I quite like Vegemite. It's you know it's it's uh, nearly as good as Marmite. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anybody got any um, any video ideas they'd like to see me do? That like to see me uh, put up? I've got quite a long list, but if you come up with a really brilliant idea, uh, I'll do the video and we'll um, and we'll give you a shout out at the same time. Hi, Mike. Cast Iron Mike's in the house. Nice to have you, here, Mike. And Teresa is probably there as well. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Really good. Sorry, I've got itchy nose going on here. Uh, oh, I'm scared of sneezing. <laughs> Excuse me. Live shows. Terrible, really. Yeah. So Mike's in the house. He did, um, did a video on um, using salt to clean your black iron. Which is a really, really useful thing for me. It's it's not not a method I've tried before, so um, it's definitely one that that I'd, I'd like to try. Yeah, Patrick's been on the whiskey, mate. So he's, he's probably in a highly advanced state of refreshment. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Right, let's see if we can get this. Um, this what's it going? Um, quiz. Uh, where are we? Okay, I think I found something. Uh, okay. I think what we'll do here is we'll uh, we'll run through the questions, and then we'll see how many of you know the answers, and we'll just I'll just run 10 questions to start with and see see what the response is like question number one lady finger is a variety of which fruit i don't know that one i'll repeat the question lady finger is a variety of which fruit Patrick says banana. Either that or he's just talking about his sex life. Uh, Stephen and Jacqueline say okra. Martin. Hi, Martin. Mar Martin says okra as well. Thanks for joining us, Martin. Nice to see you. Always nice to welcome friends. Okay, so on that one we've got two okra and one banana. I th I, I I personally would go with okra because I have heard okra's covered lady fingers elsewhere. Right, on to the second question. Where does the story about carrots helping see in the dark come from? Repeat question, where does the story about carrots helping to see, helping people to see in the dark come from? <clears throat> Probably because you never see a rabbit wearing glasses. Anybody got any ideas? Bugs Bunny. Bugs, that that is that is a good answer. That's one good answer. Come on, anyone else? Patrick's still talking about his sex life. <laughs> Banana. Yeah. Uh. Anyone else? Okay. I think we're probably going with Bugs Bunny on that one. I wonder if it... I think it's quite old. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like either the story of uh, Br'er Rabbit or perhaps even from Enid Blyton, one of her books, Winnie the Pooh or something like that. Um... John Doe says RAF it comes from the RAF. Well, there's a thought. Yeah, I think I think the um, I think the idea of it. The yeah, but I think yeah, I think I think they said something like it was, it was because the British pilots were fed on a diet of carrots or something like that. And uh, they didn't want to give away the fact that we had uh, we had radar early in the war. That's uh, that's a possible explanation. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll go along with that one. That sounds good. Anybody got any other answers before we move on? Moving on shortly. There's nine co concurrent viewers. If if you um, if you if you'd like to say hello, we can give you a shout out, or just give us a thumbs up, please, because uh, they really do help us. It, it, it helps. Uh, place our videos higher in the ratings so they really do help so if you want to help you can either say hi or do both say hi and give us a thumbs up uh, question number three what unlikely medical use has been found for coconut water what Unlikely medical use has been found for coconut water. That one's got me perplexed. Eye drops? I don't know, something different. Anybody got any ideas? Patrick still talking about his sex life. <laughs> yeah. Lower cholesterol. Yeah, that's that's uh, a possibility. Although they do say that uh, coconut oil is high in cholesterol. Soldier poets in the house. Hello. Hi, soldier poet. Thanks for joining us. And welcome. So Martin has come up with a, an answer that does sound reasonably medical. Patrick's come up with three bananas. <laughs> three bananas. We're getting three this time. Uh, prevention of kidney stones. Well, that's, a, that's a, a possible as well, isn't it? Yeah, that sounds feasible. Don't know where you get all these ideas from. Cleverer than I am. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. I I had no idea about the coconut water. I haven't got a clue. Unlikely medical use. Unlikely. An unlikely medical use. Yeah. If it's unlikely, it's more likely going to be the kidney stones. Okay, next one. Which country grows the most maize? Which country grows the most maize? Well, I know, I know, in, I know they eat an awful lot of um, maize uh, flour tortillas in Mexico. Uh, USA grows an awful lot, don't they, for animal feeds and all sorts. Yeah, USA. I know India grows a lot. I'm not sure they grow more than the USA, though. Um, I'd probably go with the uh, USA. Hi, Janice. Yeah. Hi Janice, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'd go with the USA. Right. Um Question five. How many calories are in one gram of fat? Is it nine? Is it twenty one or is it thirty? How many calories are in one gram of fat? Nine 21 or 30. Soldier Poet says 9. Martin says 30. 
Janice says nine. Mike says he's amazed. <laughs> he's amazed. Well, I, I, I would tend to, uh, I would tend to take uh, Mike's point of view on the previous question about the maze because I know that Mike spent a lot of his professional life driving across America and looking at all the fields. So I think he would probably know better than most of us. So uh, Patrick, Patrick says 9.5. Not 9.5 banana. <laughs> It seems that everyone thinks it's nine. Well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay, so um, here's a good one. Question six. How many cups of tea are drunk in the UK on an average every day? How many cups of tea are drunk in the UK on average every day we have a population of something close to 70 million so it'll give you an idea how many cups of tea it's got to be billions I drink about 12 a day my brother drinks about the same so if you were to take all the adults, which is something like 30, 40 million. <laughs> 200 million, I reckon. About 200 million. And that's, that, that's the conservative estimate. Janice is a coffee only type. Martin reckons 5 mil. Any more? Any more ideas? So that's a tough one, that is. That's really tough, because you've got to kind of extrapolate that, really, haven't you? Mark reckons about 10 million. Yeah, that's probably closer to the mark. Um, but I reckon there's, there's probably at least 40 million British tea drinkers. Because children drink tea as well. So, how many are drunk a day if everyone has at least two? It's going to be more than 80 million. I reckon it's about 200 million. That's just an idea. Um, <laughs> here's a good one. I think this is actually rather British. Uh, it's rather British leaning, this quiz. So we'll, we'll we'll take it to uh, to seven questions and this last one, and then we'll um, we'll look at the answers, shall we? Yeah. Okay. The uh, some of I don't think you'll know this unless you lived in the UK. It says they came in search of paradise. You've got to name the chocolate bar. And it was the advert for it. They came in search of paradise. Bounty, Martin's got it. It's Bounty. It's coconut chocolate. Uh, it's a coconut chocolate bar. You had two, two pieces in a bar, two little coconut, uh, like coconut fondant, with um, covered in a uh, in confectioner's chocolate. It was really nice, actually. It's really sticky and sweet, and uh, actually rather wonderful. I could do one right now, actually. So that's um, Bounty. Right, let's have a... Is there any answers? Uh, yeah, right. Question one. The answer was... Patrick... 
What was the answer, Patrick? Question one. P Patrick had it. Banana. Uh, question two. Uh, it was made up by the RAF during the Second World War. Absolutely fantastic. Who got those right? Absolutely right. That was... Um, um, where was it? Let's go back. Uh, it was banana. Well, there you go. Patrick got that right. I thought it was okra. Amazing. Uh, John Doe got it right. He had uh, he said RAF and he said British had radar. Yeah. I think I think we'll have to give that one to John. He got that right. Well done, mate. Um, oh wow! Coconut water can be used as a substitute for blood plasma in emergencies. Who would have thunk it, eh? Who would have thunk it? Coconut water can be used as a substitute for blood plasma in emergencies. That is absolutely amazing. Wow. The maze question, it was the United States, so well done all those of you who, who said it was the USA. What was question five? Question five. How many calories are in one gram of fat? It was nine, correct. All those who said nine are correct. Uh, tea drinkers. 165 million. <laughs> that's a lot of tea. And considering that tea's a diuretic, that's a lot of something else as well. Right. And the answer to the question seven was bounty. Anyone up for another quiz, a different food quiz, an international food quiz, or what? Uh, Soldier Poet says we have Mounds Bar here in the US. Is that like the same with coconut and um, chocolate? You can use Marmite. Have you 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 want to dip your banana in the Marmite? It will improve the flavour of the banana, or the Marmite. Bounty Bar. I I think you got Bounty Bar in um, in Trinidad, didn't you? I think the, there's quite a few things they get in Trinidad that we that Brits think we only have here, like Tunnock's wafers, Tunnock's um, uh, chocolate wafers. That there, you can buy those in Trinidad. I took some uh, to Taste of Trini's family to uh, Reshmi's family as a you know as a as a Red Cross parcel. I took some with me, and um, and they um, and they loved them. They said they were really nice. They like the old school school foil wrappers that we still use in the UK. And they're they're from Scotland. They they do a few other things like snowballs and what have you. And these um, chocolate marshmallows. They're quite kind of nice. That the tunnocks do. Uh, right. Yeah. Stephen says that's one one of the favourites, and it, it is a nice one. Uh, we teed off. Yeah, bounty bars are great. Uh, so yeah, Soldier Poet says it is a chocolate, coconut and chocolate. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you, mate. Thanks for joining us. Adam's uh, Adam's got a, a, a quite a successful channel. If you want to go check out Adam Garrett. He's got um, an excellent cookery channel, very successful, and deservedly so too, Adam. Uh, right, um, Almond Joy's got nuts, mounds don't, because sometimes you feel like a nut, and sometimes you don't. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> that's a jingle. Oh, right. That's a, an advertising jingle for it, is it? Oh, brilliant. Uh, right. Uh, thumbs up. Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, thumbs up for the quiz. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Okay. Um, What's the other one? Um, let me... Uh, is anyone anyone interested in doing another food quiz? I can't do a gardening quiz because I don't know any of the answers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. More more food quiz. Let's see what let, let's see what's around food quiz. Food quiz. Uh -huh. You have to go through a load of rubbish before you get to what you're looking for on the internet, don't you? Um Guess the food picture quiz. I don't know if we can do that one. Uh, yeah, let's do this one. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we can do this the smart way. Uh, One second, please bear with me. There we go. Okay, there's a pic. You should see a picture on your screen now. And the question is, which sauce is a mixture of egg yolks, butter, and lemon juice? Is it bechamel? Is it hollandaise? Is it zabayon? Or is it Alfredo? Hi, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Always great to see you. Sorry, I have to keep switching. Actually, let's do this another way. Um, let me take that over there and then you'll see that. There we go. I can read that as well now. There we go. Zabayon, Hollandaise. Adam says Hollandaise. Janice says Zabayon. Don't worry about the spelling. I'll, I'll go with Hollandaise on that. Yeah, egg yolks, butter and lemon juice. It's Hollandaise, I'm pretty sure. Anyone else? No. No. Well, let's click. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Eric's with us. Thanks for joining us. Always welcome, Eric. Always welcome, Chris. Hollandaise. I think the um, I think the consensus Hollandaise, although. You don't arrive at the truth through consensus. The truth is the truth if you're the only one speaking it. Uh, oh, Motorman's here. Uh, Motorman from Massachusetts. There's a Bee Gees song in there, isn't there, somewhere? Massachusetts. I love that name. It's a wonderful play, wonderful name. Um... Oh, Eric met Mike here. 
Excellent. Maldwin's here. Maldwin has got a Welsh name. It doesn't speak Welsh. Yeah, I've I've met people who live up in um, up in parts of North Wales that don't have any English at all, uh, and I've met preschool children that didn't only spoke only Welsh. Yeah, spoke only Welsh. It's um, and you don't have to go far from the coastal strip here before you get into very Welsh speaking. The other side of um, uh, well, the other side of Llangollen. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Llandidno. The other side of Llandidno, there's a lot of Welsh spoken over that end. Very, very much indeed. Yeah. Okay, so I think the consensus went with Holland Days. Let's see if we're right. Holland Days it is. Pat yourselves on the back. Another question? How do you make deviled eggs? Is it uh, after hard boiling the eggs, you mix the yolk with mayonnaise and mustard? Or you whip the yolk and place it in the centre. Or you replace the yolk with curried butter <laughs> squash. <laughs> or you mix the yolk with mayonnaise and ketchup. Mike says he lives in Arkansas and, s and speaks limited English too. <laughs> what was it? Churchill said that... Um, the British and the Americans are two people divided by a common language. <laughs> I really love that. That's funny. A bit of a wordsmith he was, wasn't he, old Winnie? Um, Janice reckons it's A. Eric reckons it's the first one. I reckon it's the first one. Anyone else got a got a, an answer? Oh, um, Adam, I was in I was in the Ordnance Corps, which later became after I left. I left in eighty nine, and in ninety three it became part of the RLC, the really large corps, <laughs> or the <laughs> Royal Logistic Corps. Motorman reckons it's A as well. What do you reckon, Adam? How do you make deviled eggs? Mike reckons it's A as well. Mayonnaise and mustard. Right, we'll go with the mayonnaise and mustard, shall we? Chris reckons it's the first as well. And that is correct. What is couscous traditionally made out of? I'll post the link to this quiz in here if you want to follow along with it yourselves. And don't cheat. No cheating. All right. What is couscous traditionally made of? Martin says bulgur wheat, question mark. And... Um, I personally think it's Durham wheat. It says the the options are buckwheat, teff, quinoa, and Durham wheat. Yeah, couscous is definitely made from wheat. So it, the only one I can think of is Durham wheat, because buckwheat isn't really wheat. It's um, it's uh, the Japanese call it soba. It's it's not a grass at all. It's um, Patrick reckons it's lady fingers or banana or maybe even Vegemite. <laughs> Patrick, you are drunk. <laughs> Patrick's been on the whiskey again. He's been on the whiskey. He reaches for his bottle of whiskey before he turns his alarm clock off, don't you, mate? <laughs> holidays come on guys are you getting bored with this you are aren't you 
you're clearly getting bored with it. We'll do one more question. Um, let's check. Did anyone say book wheat? Nobody said book wheat. Everyone's saying wheat. Wheat it is, boys and girls. Durham wheat, which is... Um, Durham wheat is the wheat they make semolina from. It's also the main wheat that they make pasta with in Italy. Mike says if he made it, it would be made out of a mistake. <laughs> I don't believe that for a minute. Oh, here's one. You should know this one, boys and girls. Which chilli is the hottest on the Scoville scale? I know for many years it was it was the it was the Scotch bonnet. The bird eye has never been as hot as a Scotch bonnet. That's the least of these, I reckon. And for a couple of years, the Trinidad Scorpion was the highest, but it was pipped a few, about twenty fourteen, wasn't it, by the Carolina Reaper, which remains the hottest pepper in the world. If you're going for the Carolina Reapers, make sure you put a toilet roll in the freezer for emergencies. Right, what is a burrata? Is it just mozzarella? Is it mozzarella with stracciatella and cream? Is it mozzarella, cottage cheese and ricotta? Or is it ricotta and cream? Which one? Is it first, second, third or fourth? Oh, the dragon's breath. Oh, if if it's if it if it's all been pipped now by the dragon's breath, Martin, I stand corrected. But uh, yeah. What is a burrata? Second, Motorman reckons it's the second. If you've got Italian blood, you're cheating. <laughs> Mozzarella with cream. Yeah, I think it's stracciatella and cream myself. I personally do. Shall we go for that? Let's have a look. Correct. Uh, well, these are these are these aren't easy questions, are they? All right. Uh, which one of these is not a type of blue cheese? Asiago, Cabrales, Roquefort, or Mai Tag? I, the only way I know is but is by by elimination because I know which ones are. <laughs> Anyone else got got an answer? Correct. <laughs> Asiago. What it, it, this is um this is a a good one. This is what is in the canopy. Devils on horseback. Is it bacon and prunes? Is it oysters and bacon? Is it asparagus and parma ham? <laughs> or is it water? If any of you come up with any questions for me, by the way, because it's supposed to be a Q and A, this a live Q and A. But if you come up with any um, questions for me, just put them in the um, put them in the chat. <laughs> You've got to start a YouTube channel, Chris. You'd have a great time. You'd really have a great time. 
you'd love it you you learn so much Re really you learn you learn so much about cookery about and you, you can never know where it's going to take you like mine took me to trinidad and to a, um, a homestead in nova scotia it's just i would never have dreamed of that in a million years when it started it just just happened so do it do it you, you, you know just don't expect to be successful overnight um some people are you know uh it, it, it some people can be but they're in the minority the most of people do struggle for, a, for at least for a short while before before their ch channels take off but, but by all means give it a go just do it okay anybody got any answers what is in the canopy devils on horseback is it bacon and prunes is it oysters and bacon is it asparagus and parma ham or is it watermelon and feta is that for me adam that question what what it, my brother's still working actually he's on he's still on his tools he's a motor a motor mechanic yeah he was supposed to be the slow one of the family and he's got a first from uh, from the imperial college <laughs> credible <laughs> yeah oysters and bacon i think it's bacon and prunes i've, I've got this thing about I've got this thing about it having prunes in because when I first heard it and someone said it had prunes in it, I thought, prunes? Yeah, great for brown sauce, but not good for canapes. And actually, it is bacon and prunes. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Patrick's correct. Oh, here's one for you. The, the, uh, a few of you experimentalists, uh, cooking experimentalists, will definitely know this one. Um, what's another name for aubergines? That's coming from Stephen and Jacqueline. By the way, if you if you have your own channel, put an X in the chat right now so others will know to go to your channel and have a look and see what they... Uh, see what they think so if you've got a channel put an x now in the chat and then the others will be able to see and uh, go and check out your channel go shake hands with each other give each other some love watch at least three minutes of one of their videos and if you like it stay there and if you don't well you've had a look haven't you thank you appreciate that um what does the cooking method sous vide entail. Come on, Patrick, where's your ex? You've got a channel. Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline have a channel. Who else has got channels? Uh, Eric's got a channel. Eric's got a great channel. Eric's a super cook. He's only a youngster, but he's got a really, really great cook. What? The, yeah, that's that's Patrick on a good day, on the screen. <laughs> okay, what does cooking method sous vide entail? Cooking something in a bain marie? Is it steaming something? Is it cooking something over coals? Or is it cooking something in a sealed bag in water? Answers on a postcard, please. <clears throat> I might buy this pub quiz thing. It's an advert on this page. Look, this... Um, host your own pub quiz get it on amazon prime for under a fiver mm, interesting 
wouldn't be food quizzes then. I like food quizzes. Anyone got any idea about sous vide before I give the answer? Martin says it's sealed bag. Anyone else? Sous vide. No, nobody else. Cooking something in a sealed bag in water. Right, one more question, then we'll wrap it up. Uh, the quiz, at least. Uh, which of these curries doesn't have coconut in it? Massaman curry. I think that's a Thai curry. Yellow curry. I think that's a Thai curry as well. Um, Mata paneer. That's peas and cottage cheese Indian dish. Um, or Panang curry. I think that's from Malaysia. Which one of those? One, two, three or four. Doesn't have coconut in it. And before you start, Patrick, it's not banana. Matapania, Martin says. I tend to agree with uh, Martin. Yeah, it is sealed bag in water. Yeah, definitely. Um, Eric reckons it's C, Matapania. I think we've consensus on that one. And it's correct. Okay, so that wraps it up. Uh, for the quiz. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Let's have a look at this. One second. I need to whip that over. And... There we are. We're back. Okay. Mike's. Thank you, Mike, for the subscription. Thank you very much. Oh, dear. What have I done now? I've done something wrong. Um... Um. Okay, I can see where I am now. All right. Um, has anybody got any questions for me uh, before we wrap up this live stream? Anybody got any final things to say? Any insults? Hmm. That's a really good question, Adam. Adam asks, Pete, what's the one place you haven't been to that you would love to visit for the food? Uh, Thailand in general, because I love Thai food. And I've had Thai food cooked to me by Thai people in the UK. Um But specifically, one of my Thai friends in the UK, she comes from um, the northern part of Thailand, bordering on Laos. And I think of all the foods I've had uh, that have, or that are like, that I've never had in country, it would have to be that part of Thailand, northern Thailand. Another place I'd love to go is Vietnam. I'd really love to go there. Love to go to Vietnam and Thailand. Northern Thailand. It would be a nice little round robin, wouldn't it? Uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, and uh, Thailand. That would be a 
a nice little round trip. I'd like to do a couple of months out there doing that. Probably when I retire, I'll probably do that when I retire fully. I'm on semi-retirement now, but uh, once once my uh, all my money comes in, that's uh, that's probably where I'd like to go. Does that answer your question, mate? Thanks. Um, right, what's uh, um, questions? Matty, hi, hi Matty, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. That's really nice. Thanks for joining. Really great to see you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we we connected on Facebook, and I see see quite a lot on Facebook. But uh, uh, thank you for connecting uh, in this way. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it, and welcome. Um, and uh, you you're, you're in great company at the moment with this lot. I mean, there's some savages in there, but but they're they're amazing people. <laughs> Sa savages like Patrick from <laughs> from Australia. <laughs> right. Um, Motorman says, Pete, I loved your pilot's helmet. Where did you get it? I'll, I shall get him right now. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, meet... Biggles. Biggles is a fine chap. That's my uh, Biggles helmet. I can't put it on because if I do, I won't be able to hear anything. So uh, that's uh, I, I keep him in on this to keep him in shape. And it is a World War Two Ameri genuine American pilot's helmet. It is. It is. It's an American one. It's not a British. The, the, there are British ones with the with the, um, the the leather cups for the earphones that stick right out, but um, they are hideously expensive over here. We, we can get these American ones much cheaper. So I got this one. I think this was about 80, 70 or eighty quid, but the um, the British ones are somewhere near two hundred quid because the fewer of them, you know, it's just not as many. And you know the irony is, I had one when I was serving in Germany as a young man, and I put it in a an MFO box to send it home, and uh, the MFO box went missing with all my stuff. Um, so uh, I was pretty gutted about that because it had a lot of old photos in it as well. But there we go. There we go. My Biggles helmet. The, the, the glasses, they're not... Gen the, these are just period plastic, if you know what I mean. Uh, but they do look the part, don't they? They really do. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So there we go. Biggles. Uh, right. Questions? Janice wants me... Wants someone to cook, cook for... <laughs> Oh dear! Just follow, just follow our uh, our simple instructions in our recipes, and you'll be fine. Am I going to do another polytunnel update? That's from Chris. Um, <clears throat> if you see my latest video, it will explain my uh, my latest uh, videos on the Prenaboid uh, channel on my on my uh, new gardening channel. Uh, let me just give you another link for that. And if you check out the videos on that, it explains. I've actually abandoned the polytunnel project uh, in favour of going for a little um, a, a, a greenhouse frame, which a, a neighbour very, very kindly gave me. And I'm buying a proper heavy duty cover for it. Um, it's a better size. It's got more utility because it's got shelves built in, and you know, just there's an awful lot of reasons why it's good. And uh, because of a, a local bylaw, I can't have two greenhouses in the backyard. Um, I will probably make use of the polytunnel parts to create. Uh, if you look at that bed that's actually on the screen right now. 
uh, that that particular bed I'll probably create a cold frame cover for that um, something that will be able to uh, I'll be able to just hinge onto it and screw onto it so it won't that will be a project for the future right uh, Martin thanks for the live thank you mate thanks for turning up really appreciate you being here um, am I going to grow a banana tree on my new channel? Uh, I, I, I know Stephen and Jacqueline could probably grow a banana tree because they live in the tropics. They live in Trinidad, but I, I, I couldn't, much as I'd like to. And, um, you know, it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could probably grow one down in, uh, in Victoria, in um, near Melbourne. They have banana trees down there. I remember going to a market and seeing freshly cut bananas, a great big spray of bananas with a dirty, great big evil looking spider on them. Oh, actually, no, that was in South Australia in near Adelaide. Um, hang on. Uh, Jamie Max in the house. Thanks for joining us. If you if you have a channel, put an X in the chat right now so everyone can see that you have a channel and can go and check you out. Um, Adam was thinking Thailand. Yeah, it, 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 there's some fantastic street food in Thailand. If you watch Mark Weens, and I think all cooks do, um, you, you'll have seen how fantastic the street food scene is in Thailand. Uh uh, 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 the most amazing place I've actually been to for street food is a toss-up between Trinidad and Singapore um, for different reasons. Singapore's got a wider variety of different cuisines, but the the Trini cuisine street food, it, it is so massive. There's so many amazing street food items in a, in a country of something like 2.4 million people. It's unbelievable just how many different dishes they've got so um I, I would have to go to thailand and try it out before i knew which one um was the most amazing but i i think like with a lot of things that each one is amazing in its own context isn't it you know where, where you go and i'm not sitting on the fence with that i actually that i actually believe that um uh, in the setting uh, in the atmosphere and at the time and in the right company you're going to have a great time you know and the food is all, all part and parcel of that um, I was thinking Tyler myself Matty says what's the best way of cooking t tofu and you'd like me to do a tofu recipe um, I don't eat tofu uh, I've got a problem with eating phytoestrogen, so I don't cook it. I don't know why. I, it, it just affects me. Uh, I don't cook it, and I don't think my brother eats it as well. So I'm, I'm sorry, but um, the best tofu recipes I've seen have all been made with what I call pressed tofu, and it's where if you don't have, if you don't have your if you if you don't have your tofu pre-pressed you can press your own so you put it in something like muslin cloth wrap it up tight and put a weight on it uh, and then just ship out all the liquid that comes out of it and then you leave the weight on it uh, overnight in the fridge and it, it comes out pressed and then you can slice it up and use it in any kind of stir fry really so uh, I, th I think if that answers your question, I I have cooked with tofu in the past, but I I learned that it's it's not good f good for me, particularly. So I don't I don't eat it. Uh, I don't get on very well with edamame beans either. So it's it's actually the soya thing that I've got a problem with. I don't have a problem with soy sauce though because that's fermented. So I I guess 
I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I'm affected by one thing but not the other. But it's just just the way it is. So I avoid it. Sorry. Um, uh, where are we? Janice says there's a Shetland wool week and other meetup knitters and crocheters. It would be cool if all of you YT chefs had a meetup like that then have a day where you welcomed others for a small fee for eats. The logistics of organising that would be horrendous. Is getting people... I mean, you could try it, I guess. We could try it. Uh, just one small point. I don't consider myself a chef because I'm not a trained chef. I'm a cook. Um... I love cooking. I've got a passion for cooking. I've been cooking all my life, but I'm not. I'm not a trained chef, and uh, I, I, I think there's certain um, there's a certain mindset that goes with being trained as a chef, but by a particular method, by a particular school, and I'm I'm kind of glad I don't have that bias. I don't mean to insult people that are chef trained, uh, but a lot of the chef training in Britain is very f franco centric it's very french and um uh, the, there are some you know the that is a particular mindset if if i have any particular mindset it's where i learned to cook and where i started cooking and that was in um in, in hong kong when I, when i was serving there it was my first accompanied posting uh, where i went there with my wife and uh, so I started cooking in earnest when I got to Hong Kong and uh, I was fascinated by Chinese food like most people are and um, uh, I, I really I've really got a very Cantonese mindset when it comes to cooking so uh, I'm kind of glad I'd, I'm not a chef in, in I don't mean to insult people that are but I'm not I'm glad I'm not if you get what I mean um uh sorry I'm try chip try tip junkie welcome to the house try tip junkie try tips a, a cut of of beef isn't it it's a cut of a, a steak cut it's an inexpensive steak cut from the United States. It's like a three-cornered piece of lovely meat, and I've seen uh, I've seen a few people do try it, and it looks excellent. I don't mind trying that. Uh, we we don't get we have, we don't have the same cuts you have in the United States. Although we can we can get just about any American cut by mail order, but it generally unless you live in a big city where you go to an American butcher, but. Um, it's it's quite hard getting American cuts in uh, in Britain. I was watching one by Cast Iron Skillet um, Kitchen. My my, my friends um, Chef John and Rebecca, and they were doing uh, beef rib. We don't have that cut. I, I can buy it, but I have to pay a premium price and mail order it. Uh, the only regular American cut thing we can get over here is is. Um, a ribeye steak, which is you find it in just about every supermarket, even local convenience stores sell ribeyes. Um, Jamie Matt would love to go to Thailand, try the food and culture. Yeah, I think you'd have a great time there. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Biggles. I mean, Pete. <laughs> Biggles. Um, who else? Hey guys, got to carry Buddy outdoors. If you're not here when I get back, everyone have a great weekend. Sorry I missed that, Stephen and Jacqueline. What's the best way to cook a banana? Right. Patrick, you... You don't peel it. You insert it into the oven 
and bake it. And then when you when it's baked black on the outside and you can feel it's mushy on the inside, you give it a slit down the middle all the way through lengthwise. Then you open it up, you pinch it to open it up and then you're drizzling caramel, ice cream, chocolate sauce and then you eat it with a spoon. And um, just to explain to Patrick... A spoon, yeah. It's a, it's like a an implement with a with a with a little bowl and a handle on it, and you can you can like, you know. <laughs> Stephen's back. Stephen's back in the house. Cheers, mate. Um. Oh, where are we? Jamie Mack says French has been the cooking go-to for years now, but nowadays Nordic is a massive influence. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it. I think it is. So th there's quite a lot of interest in Nordic food. In fact, Patrick did did a recent uh, Nordic thing with <laughs> what was the name of that canned fish? That that rancid canned fish you had, Patrick. That's Nordic, isn't it? It's from Norway or or. Uh, Sweden or somewhere like that or both some rancid canned fish it, 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 apparently it's supposed to taste good if you can get it past your nose I've never tried it I don't think I don't I really don't think I could I I, I, I I tried and I really like durian fruit but I would really struggle with that canned fish it looks putrid canned fish if you want to check out Patrick's channel, he's done... What was it called, Patrick? That putrid fish. Um, but other Nordic... I've I've travelled quite a lot in the Danish archipelago. I did a lot of sailing up there when I was serving in the army. Um, and at one point, I skipped the Remi yacht. I skipped, I skipped that all the way up to uh, Kubernaven. And uh, that was before they built the Urson Bridge, you know. And... In Copenhagen, Copenhagen, you, you look across the Urusund and you can see Malmo at the other side in Sweden. So, but um, in I love the Danish food. I really like that. In every little harbour, there's a there's a bakery and they have these fantastic. You know, you 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 wake up in the morning and you're in the, in the boat on the water and you get the scent of this gorgeous baking bread in the morning, and it. You're in bed, just trying to sleep in your in your in your bunk in in the boat, and then your nose carries you up and out and up to the bakery. Fantastic. The other thing I loved about um, Denmark is the smorgasbord or the smorgasbord, and these are like um, open sandwiches and little open sandwiches with lots of wonderful things on them, like schmaltzy herrings and. Um, cheeses and other tidbits fantastic stuff wonderful stuff love their food um <clears throat> uh, janice says phyllis stokes r.i.p and son is another good youtube channel for recipes don't, don't i didn't know it i'll have to check it out you youtube cooks have recipes for everyday foods more practical yeah i um i i i was rather a f always a fan of keith floyd when he was alive and is i loved his his style um some of his recipes were absolutely chaotic but i just loved the man he was amazing and i kind of like of all the other chefs i like jamie oliver quite a lot because he didn't mess about he just got in and he threw it all together and came out with these nice meals but as a lot of the chefs get more and more famous they start to do more uh, expensive ingredients or they go the other way and they take something that used to be cheap uh, and they popularize it and make it bloody expensive so things like belly pork, you know, the cost of belly pork has gone through the roof. Uh, the only thing I think they struggle with is like 
this is why I go for things like beef heart because it's still cheap and it's gorgeous. It really is great. But it's only a matter of time before um, before some TV chef does beef heart and then that'll go up in price as well. So it's a, it's a bit annoying at, uh, from that level. They, you know, they're either cooking something that's well priced well beyond the average person's budget or they drive up the price of something that wasn't, you know. So it's, it is annoying from that point of view. Um, but I'm not bitter. <laughs> um, what's that? Yeah. Um, add a touch of cream with the banana. <laughs> I'm not going there. I am not. This is a family channel. I'm not going there. <laughs> Oh, matron. Um, Patrick, on and off, we've had a dish on the menu at work with lemon sole, banana and curry cream. <laughs> <clears throat> when I first heard of it, I thought it was odd, but it is really nice. That is either brilliant satire or it's something strange. Sir Strumming, that's Sir Sir Strumming, Sir Strumming, that's the name of the putrid fish in a can, and I'm not kidding you, boys and girls. The can is actually bloated out of shape by the garbage gas inside it. Ugh. I would struggle. I know I would struggle. I've got to be, got to be straight. I, I, I've eaten lots of stuff i've eaten sea slugs i've eaten some crazy i've eaten insects i've eaten a whole kebab of insects a stick with insects on it candied insects in the in the chinese cinema but um i, I don't think i could get my nose past sir strumming sorry don't think so uh, i'd have to be bladdered completely off my brains before I even tried it and I could see that happening if it ever went to Norway you know because I get get bladdered with the boys and then probably do something stupid like eat surf drumming um, cast iron mic cooks with bacon grease and damn right too it's a fine thing to cook with bacon grease is fantastic because it's made from B-A-C-O-N B A C O N. There's a song in that. There's a song in that. B A C. You know that D I S C O by Ottawan in the 70s disco thing. You can do it with bacon. B A C O N. Yeah. I'm going to write the lyrics for that. Janice just subbed uh, Patrick. Yeah, that's a good one. The lasagna pie. That was a good, good video. Patrick does a lot of crazy stuff, but it always turns out amazing. It does. I don't know. He, he, he just, he's a bit, he's a bit, um, what's the word? Chaotic, but he gets there in the end and it's always great. And it's makes, it makes his channel extremely watchable. Love it. Um, Mr. Cast Iron is, <laughs> Not a vegan cooking channel. <laughs> yeah. You can say that again. I'll buy that for a dollar. Um, uh, cooking with Steve, uh, Stephen and Jacqueline. Have I ever watched Ainsley's Barbecue Bible? No, I, I, I like Ainsley though. He's quite... Are we talking about the same guy, Ainsley? Was it Ainsley Harris? Um, British Caribbean guy, I think. Really good, really, yeah, quite good. I loved his stuff. Yeah, it was all right. I, I enjoyed his. He was very personable as well on TV. I liked him a lot. Yeah, I haven't seen. I don't watch TV. I haven't watched TV since two thousand and eight. So, got no interest in it. I watch the new media, YouTube videos. 
Uh, yeah, that's what happened to... It is, Jamie Mack. That's exactly what happened to Monkfish. Monkfish was a poor man's lobster, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great fish. It's a lovely, firm fish. You can make kebabs out of it. It's really that firm. And, <laughs> and um, it, it used to be called mock lobster because it's got a texture like lobster. It's great, great fish. Yeah. It's a sea angler fish, a deep sea fish. But it's a fantastic fish. And it used to be so cheap. In fact, old fishermen would tell you that, that it was so worthless that they'd throw it back if they found it in the nets. I mean, nowadays it's got a stupid price. Same with uh, halibut as well. You used to get... Halibut used to be just a little more in price than cod back in the day going back 30 years but now it's i mean cod's expensive but halibut has gone through the roof banana yes patrick i i i have been known to partake of the occasional platano mate i do yeah i like them they eat a lot <laughs> especially on banana tv yeah hmm Yeah, it's some people do. Yeah, they use it for scampi. Yeah, in fact, I I think that's probably a a pretty good use for it now because the cost of Dublin Bay prawns has gone up through the roof as well, or, or scampi as the Italians call them. Um. Yeah. It, Patrick would would come up with a dish. You could give him any random set of um, ingredients, and he he will he will not only make a dish out of it; he'll actually make a decent video out of it as well. Yeah, two two hundred quid for a halibut. Yeah, it's ridiculous, totally ridiculous. Right, any more questions before we wrap it up? Any more anecdotes before we wrap it up? We've been an hour and a half so far. We got off to a slow start, but we're really cruising now, aren't we? Is there anybody lurking in the background that hasn't uh, said hello? Please do. Please say hello. I don't know what all these analytics are. Chat rate. Chat rate. Playbacks. Average watch time. Oh, my watch time's gone up. Yeah. Oh, the analytics are worth looking at. So, anybody got any final questions? Anybody got any final things to say before we wrap this up? Thanks, Tri-Tip Junkie. Th um, thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs up. It's, I don't know if it's, it's a very British thing, but we don't like asking for money and we don't like asking for thumbs up. So I have to put my uh, non-British head on to do that. I don't know why. John Cleese explained it once about being British, how... It's like being a seething mass of um, contradictions. He's right. The Hillbilly Kitchen. I think I've... Have I not seen that? I think I've come across that before. Patrick's only here for the bananas. All right. So, uh, one minute warning, boys and girls. We're going to end this in one minute thanks for coming along and it's been great uh, hosting you. you you wonderful people I love every one of you and uh, I love all you guys that's watching wherever you may be thanks Mike Patrick's only here for the bananas did you know that bananas are really good for your garden? 
Yeah. I chop them up and I dry them in my air fry until they, they crack a dry and then I grind them up and then I add that as um, uh, to my compost and to my beds and it's a great source of, was it potassium I think Oh no, no worries uh, Jamie, I'm glad you came along at all mate, I really, really do really appreciate you being here and uh, let's um can I get to you used to be able to get to people's channels didn't you by um by clicking on the three dots but you can't I think Patrick's a moderator that's it moderator it's the word I was looking for and Stephen's a moderator as well yeah okay boys and girls thank you very much for coming along i really appreciate you being here it's been a great fun we've had a bit a bit of a quiz we've had a good laugh and uh, patrick's been here as well <laughs> so uh, big love to all of you and bananas to patrick You know, I don't mean that, Patrick. Love you, mate. Bye now. <laughs>